Okay, um, one of the things you'll become familiar with with your diabetic diagnosis is the phrase HbA1c. Um, it's not very user-friendly, it is a medical term. It's to do with your um, haemoglobin in your blood. Haemoglobin actually gives the red colour to red blood cells, making your blood red. And one of the things that happens in the body's metabolism is that glucose actually sticks to haemoglobin. Haemoglobin molecules usually live for 8 to 12 weeks. So within that life cycle, they just give an average of the whole two to three months of your control. You should be getting an HbA1c reading every time you go to clinic. Um, and type 1 diabetics really ought to be going to clinic every three to four months if possible. Um, not all GPs do HbA1c tests. Uh, you might act actually end up being sent either to a phlebotomist at your GPs or going to the local hospital to get blood drawn to get this done. Um, it's not usually something that can get measured on, on a, certainly not an everyday meter. Although there are some meters coming out that are being designed for GPs surgery so that they can do an HbA1c on the spot. Like any number, it's, it needs to be taken in context. It's presented as a percentage. I mean, for example, my HbA1c is normally 8.2, 8.3%. It's not bad, but it's not great. Ideally, it should be under six. Normal diabetic, well, normal people who are not diabetic, it's usually under five. Now, because a diabetic is dealing with the fact that their blood sugars can rise quite a lot, you know, we can't literally be expected to have the same reading as a non-diabetic. In fact, there's some evidence to point that trying to achieve that level actually reduces your chances of living a really long time if you do try and achieve that with diabetes. It means such tight control. Um, having said that, the HbA1c is the best guide we have. So um, one of the things that's happening today is the HbA1c test is actually being used to diagnose diabetes. It has been for a long time, but the fact is, if, if people just do a one-off blood test, if your doctor does a one-off blood test on you, you might actually be at that stage having a normal or low blood sugar. So you won't show as having an abnormal blood sugar reading. But if you have blood tests done over the space of a couple of weeks, you might find that there are peaks and troughs that are not normal. Normal non-diabetics simply don't go out of this range. If the range is like this, people stay within it. Diabetics tend to do this. You go over and above the norm. So the HbA1c test is a, it's a stake in the ground. It's, it's literally something you can hang your hat on. It, 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 you can't judge all your diabetic control from it because of the fact it's an average. If your HbA1c is 6.5, it might actually be hiding quite badly controlled diabetes, where you might be spending an awful lot of time having hypos, which wouldn't be very desirable in terms of quality of life. Um, having said that, it's very important because it's the clearest indicator we have as to your long-term ability to live with diabetes and not end up with what they call diabetic complications, which is damage to the body. Uh, there was a test called the DCCT. It was done in America. It wasn't a test, it was a study. And it went on for, for 10 years, between 1983 to 1993. And they took more than 1,000 people with diabetes who'd only had it between 1 and 15 years and who had no signs of either nerve damage or eye damage or kidney damage. And they put them into two groups. One had normal control as per the time frame, the, the, the history, how it was looked at being controlled back then, which is 25 years ago, um, at versus what they call tight control, which is really it's carb counting, multiple blood testing, multiple injections. And they were able to show that the multiple you know, that the tight control helped stave off any complications. It helped to have much better um, HbA1c results, and good HbA1c results lead to a much better long-term prognosis. So 
The HbA1c is an important number and you should be getting it looked at at least every three to six months. And if, if the number's always good, then there's no need to worry. Uh, but if it's always bad, then you, know, you need to keep, keep trying with new medications and new tools until you can get the balance right in your life. So just a point about using the HbA1c test to diagnose diabetes. If it comes up at as higher than or greater than 6.5%, you're pretty much defined as having diabetes. If it comes up between 6 and 6.5, you're probably going to get diagnosed with pre-diabetes or what's for a while was called like 1.5 diabetes um, as opposed to type 1 or type 2. But if your reading is less than 6%, then you're not considered to be either pre-diabetic or diabetic.